Hello guys, it's time to create our update functions in both our controller and gmock and service. As you might have noticed, I've changed a little bit of the application, but nothing special. I've just added an edit button and modified the color for the delete button. And what we have when we click on the edit button, we have an inline edit functionality, so we can change anything inside here. And then we can click save. Nothing happens at the minute because that's what we are going to do together. Or we can cancel it and we go back to read mode. In order to achieve this result, I've used all the functions that you have already seen, well, at least a few of them. I'll guide you through the changes. I prefer not to have a lesson where we're just going to modify the template because it's quite simple. In our event list, I basically added a few ng show conditions that are checking a flag that I'm defining in my controller. So here I'm just initializing that. And what happens is that when I click on edit, I'm setting the even edit event ID. So basically the flag for that specific record in my ng repeat. If you remember, event is where the element, uh, the single element in our ng repeat. I set the flag to be its opposite. So if it's not initialized, it will be set to true. My ng show property will display the read mode, which you can see in this section. In case the flag is set to false, we have a not in front of our check, but that could then be also ngi'd without the not condition. And we'll show the edit mode, so we have different input text binding to the ng model inside our ng repeat, so binding to the event, to the single event inside our ng repeat. And all of these TDs are going to be show if our set, uh, flag is set to true. We have a delete button with no action at the minute. We have an edit button that is setting the flag again to its opposite. So if it's true, it will be false. And if it's false, it will be true. And we have an undo button that does the same identical thing. Okay. So this is our initial template. And that's what you'll find in the initial zip file. So what we want to do now is that whenever the user updates any of the fields, and clicks on save, a process will trigger and that record will be updated in our list. And if we move around to the add event form, for example, and we go back to manage events, we want to see the actual record and not the previous one. So let's do that immediately. The first thing we have to do is to define the function that we want to call on save. And that function will be managerctl.update and we're going to pass the wall event. Okay, event. So far so good. So we can save that and that's our change done. In our controller, we are going to define a new function in our manager controller. And that function will be this dot, actually will be self dot update equals function that takes the event as a parm. And that function will invoke our event factory dot update service that we don't have yet. And the parameter will be event. Okay. Let's call it update event. We're going to write also a then function to process our promise. And our function as usual, will have the successful one in case the promise is fulfilled and the error one in case the promise is rejected. We won't be dealing with the tor uh, parameter, which can be the notification that we receive from the promise. So imagine a file upload, we can get continuous notification or uh, a system processing and we want to show a progress bar. We can use the tor function to update the progress bar. So this will be our data payload and this will be our error. And we leave that empty for now. Let's move into the event factory and we'll create a new cre update event function. So event factory dot update event, which takes as input parm the event itself. And it calls a new API, which is API events slash what update. Okay. And it passes our event as input. And that's it done once again. So now, the tricky part, we'll go to uprun mock.js and we are going to add our update processing. So we'll have update function. We can just copy the declaration. Oop. 
that's it, we'll call it app events update. The first part is identical, we grab our data in our event variable, angular dot from JSON, from JSON, and we'll pass in the data itself. So we are basically taking our data, deserialize it, and assign that to our event variable. The next step is to loop through the records we have in our main events array object, and we are going to look for the event that we want to update. To do so, due to the fact that we have a limited set of uh, records, I'm going to use a traditional plain old for loop. So that will be for i equals zero, i less then events dot length i plus plus instead there we're just going to have an if statement that check that if the event we're currently have at our index specifically its id is equal to the one in our data so the one that we want to update what we're going to do well we're just going to do events at our index will be our new event our updated one. You can just break the if the for loop. Okay? So inside our for loop we just need to return to the caller the result. So we'll just copy the one that we had previously defined in our new events. And we're going to modify that a little so that we'll return an events item. And the content will be the events itself. So if you remember, the second part is the data payload. So there will be a data object containing our events. Now we can just close the main function and that's our mock completed. Due to the fact that we are returning a data object in our uh, mock, we don't really want to have something in the controller that will need to go into the nested objects to retrieve the data, so we are going to modify the response in our service before it gets returned to the controller. To do so, we'll just start the processing. So we have the 10 function to process the promise. The first one will be our response. The second one will be an eventual error, but I'm sure that will be known. Inside the response, we're going to define a variable to store our data, and that will be response.data.events. So we'll bring it to the top level. We're going to return the $HTTP post result, okay? And we're going to manage the error, and that will be just an alert. Also here, we need to add the return data, sorry, okay? And the alert will be... Ah, let's just do a return false in that case, okay? For now. We could have added an alert as usual, but there's no need for that. Let me just check if all the code is alright. Uh, our for loop. Oh, well, actually, this should be a semicolon and not a comma. And this one should be events, okay? And get it sloppy, guys. Sorry about that. That won't happen anymore. Okay, so I'll save it, I'll go back to my controller, and here we can finally define what happens in our then function in case the promise is fulfilled, and well, that will be self.eventList equals data, that's it. So we're basically getting the world data set, and we're assigning that to our event list. And in case we have an error this time, we'll have an alert that will say an error occurred while updating the event, okay? Is that uh, right? Yeah, let's add some formatting. And that should be it. If I saved everything, we can now check what happens in our application. We're back in our usual event list. I'm going to edit the first record and instead of being the Metallica concert, this time will be, I don't know, what's your favorite artist? Let's put Iron Maiden, okay? So I'm gonna save it, and we get no errors, that's fine. So I'm gonna move back to the form, and back to my manage events, and my event has been updated. Of course, if I refresh the page, it will be back to what it was previously, because our data is are coded, but our functionality is working fine. Except one thing that I want to show you, 
and you might have noticed already. When I click on edit, I modify whatever, so the category for example, and I click on save, what I want to happen is that I'll get back the read-only mode. So to do so, it's very easy, we can go back to our event list, we have our save, and after updating the event, we can add a semicolon because inside our ng click we can concatenate the expressions we want to evaluate, we can concatenate the function calls. So contextually to that, we're going to revert the flag value, right? And that's our flag. So if I do that once again, I'll edit my first event, I'll put Iron Maiden, and when I save, BAM! It's back to normal. One suggestion for you guys, this can be a good exercise for you, you might replace all these calls to ng-click that will revert the flag to be an actual function. So we, you might have a toggle function inside your controller that will take the toggle and revert its value. So we have our add function, we have our update function, it's time to create our delete function. We'll do that in the next lesson.